Math 1314, Tyler Junior College, section 2.6, combinations of functions, composite functions, composition of functions, part one. So far, we've defined the domain of a function and issues to look out for. We've defined four ways to create a new function from two old functions, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and how to find their domains. In essence, it's the intersection of the original domains with the exception of the quotient where you also have to throw, throw out any values that make the denominator equal to zero. Now it's time to introduce a fifth way to combine two functions. Suppose f of x and g of x are functions with domains df and dg respectively. The composition f circle g, but that's not how you read it. You read this f of g almost as if the circle was an abbreviation for the word of. But the composition f of g is defined this way. f of g of x is. Now the reason I left it blank is because I want you to listen to how you read this. This is read f of g. So this is f of g of x. f of g of x. f of g of x. The definition is in how you read it, but you read it with a pause in a different place. Because I say the word of twice, f of g of x. Now I'm going to pause after the first of. Let's say the same words. So before, f of g of x. Now, f of g of x. Same words, same order. Pause in a different place. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, this is f of g of x, but if I pause in a different place, it's f of g of x. It's f of g of x. Watch, it's f of g of x. So the nice thing about the definition of composition is that it defines itself if you simply pause at a different place in reading it. As a single function, I read it f of g of x. As a definition, f of g of x. Basically, you're putting one function inside of another. Now, this isn't the first time we've done this. When we first learned function notation, back in the video series for section, oh, I want to say it was uh, 2.1, the beginning of chapter 2, we did see problems like if f of x equals 3x plus 2, find f of x squared plus 1, where we would replace the x with parentheses, so three parentheses plus 2, and then fill in the parentheses with whatever was here. That's pretty much what we're doing here, but now we're given a name to both the function on the outside and the function on the inside. So, let's, oh, and the domain, <laughs> okay. The domain is easier to do than this looks. The definition of the domain is, it's the domain of G, and more specifically, the domain of the inner function. Don't get hung up on who's called what. Focus on position. It's the domain of the inner function. So the inner domain, if you will, intersect all the values in the first domain such that G of X is in the second domain. Now, why is, why is that important? Because think about the journey this x is going to take here. The first thing you must do is to be able to go into the g function, go into the one closest to it. That's why it has to belong to that function. But once it comes out of this function, it's now going immediately into the next one. In other words, the output of this function is going into the second function. So the output of the first function must be in the domain of the second function. Now, this is much easier to do than it is to describe. We'll see what I mean in a minute. For example, if f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1, and g of x equals 3x minus 2, find f of g of x, g of f of x, and their domains. I'm going to do the work here and then just write the answers over here. So let's start by setting up the first answers. f of g of x equals, and over here, I'll put a semicolon, the domain of f of g equals. And for the other one, 
g of f of x equals semicolon its domain, domain of g of f equals. But let's do the work over here. For the first part, we need to find f of g of x. f of g of x. And I can't stress this enough, but the catalyst for setting this off is reading this with a pause after the first of instead of the second. f of, excuse me, f of g of x means f of g of x. f of g of x. Now, where do we go from here? Well, inside out. Go to the inner function and replace it with what it equals. So replace the inner function. And what does the inner function equal? Well, in this problem, it's 3x minus 2. So I'm going to leave the outer function alone for a minute and replace the inner function with 3x minus 2, which I'm going to write in red just for contrast. Now we're in the same position we were back in section 2.1, where we evaluated a function at an expression. Just a reminder, a safe way to always set it up is to write the outer function, but replace each x with parentheses. So I'm going to write x squared plus 2x plus 1, but every time I'm about to write an x, I'm not going to. I'm going to write an empty set of parentheses. So x squared, excuse me, parentheses squared, plus 2x, excuse me, plus 2 parentheses, plus 1. This is what the outer function does. This is what it's doing it to. Fill in the parentheses. You want to get good at this? Practice to the point where you can start here, and it's not nearly as hard as it seems. All you have to do is write the outer function with parentheses and fill it in with the inner function. Let me say that again. All you have to do is bypass and get right down to here. Write the outer function with parentheses instead of x's, that's the black part. Fill it in with the inner function, that's the red part. At this point, we've technically created our function, but we don't like to leave things unsimplified. So let's bust open these parentheses and clean things up. The first parentheses is a FOIL problem, so if you wrote the parentheses twice and then FOIL it out, you would get 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. Don't believe me? FOIL it. The second set of parentheses just invokes the distributive property, so positive 2 times 3x is positive 6x, Positive 2 times negative 2 is plus, uh, negative 4. And then we have a plus 1. And so now we just have to gather everything. This is the only x squared term, so not x squared. We have a minus 12x and a plus 6x, so that's minus 6x. And then we have minus 4, excuse me, plus 4, minus 4, those cancel, plus 1. So that is f of g of x for this problem. 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. I know some of you that are really on top of your game might be recognizing that this is x plus 1 quantity squared and would have got us here quicker. That's not always going to be an option, so let's not worry about it. Oh, but let's worry about the domain. So, how do you find the domain of a composite function? Well, the definition is kind of rigorous, but it's actually easy to pull off. You just have to keep track of where the x is trying to go. The first place the x is trying to go is into the inner function. So this part is saying, look at the inner function and its domain. Well, 3x minus 2 has no issues. Its domain is negative infinity to infinity. But for the rest of this mess, you don't look at the outer function, you look at the final function. In other words, you go to the very end and look at the domain. So we go here. That's another polynomial. This domain is still negative infinity to infinity. So again, to find the domain of a composite function, you look at the first inner function and you look at the final function. First function, final function, and intersect their domains. 
These two domains, of course, are all real numbers, so their intersection is also all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. The fact that these were both polynomials was destined to have a domain of all real numbers. Polynomials just don't have domain issues. It's when you start sticking them places you're not supposed to, like denominators or under square roots. Let's try g of f of x. This one will actually go a little bit quicker. I'm going to go through it step by step, but I want to remind you that you can skip the first two steps. I'll remind you how when we get here. To set up g of f of x, you just write g of f of x. Then work your way inside out. The inner function is f of x. In this problem, f of x was x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now I have to perform the g function on that. Now remember, when you're setting up the outer function, write it, but replace the x with parentheses. So instead of 3x minus 2, I'm going to write 3 parentheses minus 2. And I'm going to make this g look a little more g-ish. Right now it looks like a 9 in a distributive property, and it's neither. All right, so if we g the x squared plus 2x plus 2 plus 1, we get 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 1, and then minus 2. So the simplification here is a little bit easier because we're not squaring any binomials. We simply have to distribute the 3 and combine like terms. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times positive 2x is positive 6x. 3 times positive 1 is positive 3. Then I'm going to subtract 2. I'd better go ahead and write both steps because when I combine those like terms, I'm going to get a plus 1. And if I skip that middle line, you might think, hey, you forgot to distribute and you forgot the minus 2. But actually, I did both. So what's the domain of this composite function? Well, you look at the inner domain. So the inner domain was the f, but that domain is negative infinity to infinity. And you look at the final domain, which is also negative infinity to infinity. So again, not a real shocker. The domain of the composition of these two polynomial functions is all real number. And the composition in the other order was 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. So as you can tell from this example, the order does matter. We're going to look at one more example of function composition, where the functions have more domain issues than these, because these have no domain issues.